The night was abysmal, and as I listened from the basement to the rain beating on the thin wooden roof, I felt pretty good about my decision to stay in the strange old man's house. The room by the wine cellar was small, and there was an irritating dust flying through the air. As I laid myself down to sleep, I felt strangely saddened and slightly depressed, and with a spark of an idea in my mind, I decided that I would wait for a few hours and then sneak into the wine cellar to have my fill of wine. I let the hours pass as I thought of all the money I might make on the town, the things I would spend it on, and how deeply I longed to find love in the world. But as a con man, that was a far-off dream. Finally, the hour approached in which I felt safe sneaking into the wine cellar. I stood from the little bed and opened the door to leave. But as I did, I thought I heard something upstairs. Voices. I think he's the bearer of Klee. He's come to bear Klee against the Freel of Free Streel. Shh! Keep your voice down, whispered the old man in a loud hush. We don't need him hearing you. Why not, replied Agatha. It's not like he's not going to find out. There was a silence from upstairs, and I began to worry. Worried that they were talking about me. Of course, I had no idea what Klee or Freel or Streel were, so I dismissed the matter, and after hearing the door open and shut as the old woman left, I snuck into the wine cellar and began to peruse the wines. All around me were bottles of different color wines in bottles with a rainbow of colored caps. These bottles were held in metal racks that filled the room like giants that rose several feet above my head. The room was dark, the floor covered in hay, and I began to pass between the racks, thinking. I went around, looking for an already open bottle or a bottle opener, and finally found one sitting by a door in the back. The door was round, much like the entrance to the wine cellar, but what interested me most was its lock. The keyhole appeared to be shaped to fit a human hand, but ignoring this as well, I began to drink, and so my personal wine party <laughs> continued for nearly an hour, when finally, as I was opening a particular bottle of red wine with the words, Abea para apesoa que non va a vivre, printed on a yellowing old label, before I could get the bottle open, I heard footsteps coming down the stairs and immediately knew I had to hide. Without thinking, I ran to the door in the back and stuck my hand into the enormous lock, hoping that somehow I could figure out how to open it, and was surprised to find that my arm sufficed as a key. The round door swung open instantly, and I ran into the darkness behind it, which led me into fatigue, into desperation, and into sleep. Tune in next time for the next installment of... The Freel of Streel.